Hello and welcome back. We have an interesting journey today. We travel to the Philippines, Malaysia, and Aotearoa, New Zealand. The Vaporized Nicotine Products Regulation Act is now law in the Philippines. The most important aspect of the law is that it legitimizes vaping as a strategy to help the 16 million Filipinos who currently smoke an alternative, a government approved and regulated alternative that could save millions of lives. We asked Clarice Virgino, the Philippine representative for CAFRA, for her thoughts. It's really good news that the vape bill has lapsed into ALO. And we've been looking forward to it. And uh, we've, been, we've been working on having fair regulations on e-cigarettes or heat not burn products. And finally, we have a definite and solid law which will be helpful and beneficial for consumers and the industry. Having a law will be able to uh, protect the rights of consumers and probably the general public as well. Unlike before, we were like in the dark because we didn't have any rules or regulations regarding THR products and THR in general. So now that we have a law, we won't be seeing unregulated selling or use of THR products. Everything is, as they say, in black and white. So it's a good thing. It's a, it's a really good and positive thing. And we are thankful to those who supported the bill and saw to its passage to become a law. Now that uh, we have a law in place, I think aside from protection that it will give consumers and the industry, it will also set, it will also serve as a big step forward to raising the public's awareness regarding THR and THR products. As you know. There is still a stigma as to the use of THR products and actually THR in general. And we know for a fact that it has helped a whole lot of people, and, and I mean a lot of people from all over the world in quitting smoking. So now that this law is in existence, we will be able to help more cigarette smokers quit. And hopefully, in the years to come, we will be able to decrease, if not eradicate, uh, the number of smokers and number of smoking-related deaths in the Philippines. It's been a wild ride for the advocates in Malaysia. It was expected that the Generation Endgame regulation would become law on the 3rd of August. However, that is not the case. The advocates and vendors in Malaysia had numerous meetings with ministers to discuss the proposed regulations and to inform them how the regulations as presented would be a failure for the people of Malaysia. It was explained what tobacco harm reduction is and how access to safer nicotine products would be a win for the country. Samsul Arafin Kamal, the lead advocate for Move Malaysia, provided us with his statement on what happened on the 2nd of August and what will happen going forward. Now recently, our health minister tabled the GEG or the Generational Endgame Bill to the parliament. And we were then summoned to meet up with the Minister of Health and we were told that we need to support this bill or it will never be regulated and legalized in Malaysia. So initially, we were supportive, but then after we were briefed about the bill, we believe that there are a lot of things that need to be amended before we can put our support behind the bill. So let me now just briefly explain uh, about the bill. If you are born on the 1st of January 2007 and after, you can be fined up to 500 ringgit and can be dragged to a criminal court if you purchase, use or possess cigarettes or any vape products. For the retailers, they can be fined up to 20,000 ringgit and be jailed up to two years if they are caught selling to the GEG generation. Now, even though 10 years down the line, the GEG generation would be about 28 to 30 years old. Also, if you advertise any of these products, you can be jailed up to a year. If you fall under the GEG age bracket, you cannot work in any premise that sells cigarettes or vape products. So that would mean that you are not able to work in any convenience stores or restaurants. Now, 
even more alarming. The authorities can search your premise, your house, your shop, confiscate all your products, your computers, and your mobile phone, even without a warrant. And the Minister of Health wanted to bulldoze this bill through, so we then decided that we have to do something. We meet up with a lot of MPs from both sides of the aisle and we told them that there are certain things that we need to do before this bill is tabled. So we gave them few points to be delivered in the parliament so that our voice are represented. Number one, we have to ensure that there is no abuse of power in enforcing this law. Number two, the end users cannot be criminalized under this law. And number three, vape and non combustible products need to be accepted as harm reduction products and to be regulated under a separate bill. So true enough, when the bill was tabled for the second reading, it did not proceed for the voting because most of the MPs were opposing, were opposed to it. Right? And our voice were, were heard and represented in the parliament. It was then referred to the uh, special select committee for further discussion. We are hopeful that MOVE will be represented in the select committee and we will make sure that the rights of all users are upheld before we can put our support behind this bill. Thank you. Advocates in Aotearoa, New Zealand are in for a wild ride, such as Malaysia just experienced. The public consultation and submission phase for the amendments to the Smoke-Free Environments and Regulated Tobacco Act have opened. There are three main topics open for consultation. The smoke-free generation, very low nicotine cigarettes, and limits on the number of tobacco retailers nationwide. Make your submission, and if possible, do it before the committee via video link. The closing date of this consultation is the 24th of August, 2022. The battle in Aotearoa, New Zealand is by no means over. We will be doing a special feature explaining the ins and outs of what is going on. And in Malaysia, we are very proud of the advocates there for demanding that regulations are implemented correctly right the first time. And in the Philippines, once again, congratulations. Your win is a win for the wider Asia-Pacific region. Until next time, stay safe and be well.